Hello and welcome to this tutorial on frame relay configuration and verification. Now this is part one of two and we're going to start off here with a fully mesh topology and we'll see what we have to do in order to get frame relay up and running on this type of network. Now in the second frame relay configuration tutorial we'll take a look at how to configure frame relay in a partially mesh topology because there are some differences. Here's a diagram of our lab setup for this tutorial, and because this is a fully meshed topology, we have a virtual circuit between each of the router pairs. Also, as we've mentioned before, in a fully meshed topology, we can use one subnet to number all of the routers in this network. Now, we're going to be focusing on router A and router B, and we'll configure the virtual circuit between them. The IP address information we'll need is here. You can see we have a slash 24 and we're using IPs from that one subnet to number both of them. And then we'll also need to know the DELSI information. Router A is going to use DELSI 29 and router B will use DELSI 59. Now frame relay configuration can be a little bit confusing so I want you to, re to remember three steps you have to take in order to get frame relay up and running. The first one is you have to define your encapsulation. So Frame Relay is a Layer 2 protocol, so you have to state that you want to use Frame Relay as your encapsulation. Okay, so that essentially turns on Frame Relay. The second thing you have to do is you have to make sure that the router can talk to the Frame Relay switch. Remember, they use LMI to do that, so we need to make sure they're both using the same type of LMI. Okay, so step two is LMI configuration. And the third and final step is to configure the mapping between the IP address and the DELSI. Do you remember when we talked about inverse ARP and how that will automatically associate an IP address with a, a DELSI number? Well, we need to make sure that that happens, either manually or automatically. Okay, so those are the three steps. Keep those in mind and you'll be okay when you need to troubleshoot and configure Frame Relay. So let's go ahead and jump onto the lab and get started. We are on router A and router B is already configured. So if we do this properly, we'll be able to use the virtual circuit between the two routers. First, let's take a look at our interface and an IP address is required. And I've already put one on here because by now you already know how to do this. So the first thing we have to set up our, our encapsulation and we'll jump into the interface serial 000, and we've done this before with HDLC and PPP well this time it's just going to be frame relay now what type of frame relay do we want to use well we have two choices the default is Cisco so if I just hit enter here it'll use Cisco or I can specify IETF now you can use either one as long as both routers at the end of each at the end of the virtual circuit are using the same type. If you use different types of encapsulation, they will not be able to talk to each other. Okay, so I'm going to go with the default, which is Cisco. And we'll just now take a look at the interface configuration. And you can see our encapsulation is now frame relay, so we have successfully enabled frame relay on this circuit. Next, we're going to configure LMI. Again, this is the communication between the router and the frame relay switch. Now, by default, the router will auto sense what type of LMI is used by the frame relay switch and it'll adjust accordingly. So you don't have to do anything here. Even though frame relay is a bit more complicated uh, in terms of configuration when compared to PPP and HDLC, here we're actually getting a break. However, if you do have to specify manually what type to use, in interface configuration mode, the command you would use is frame relay, LMI type, and then here are the parameter choices. Now, it doesn't matter which one you use as long as it's the same one that your frame relay provider uses. So if they tell you to use Cisco or ANSI or Q933, then if you're going to manually configure this, then you have to make sure it's the same, okay? By the way, when you manually specify which type of LMI to use, that will disable the auto sense, okay? So if you, if you put in the wrong one here, you're going to have LMI problems. For our first configuration, I'm going to go ahead and let the router use the auto sense to determine what type of LMI to use. Okay, we're at the final step of our frame relay configuration, and here we map an IP address to a DELSI. 
Now normally, the router is going to use inverse ARP automatically to figure this out for us. This is the default behavior. So again, we're getting a break. Even though Frame Relay is more complicated to configure than HDLC and PPP, Frame Relay likes us and it's helping us out. However, if you had to manually configure an IP to DELSI mapping, then you need to know about this next command. So again, in interface configuration mode, you would enter frame relay map IP, and then you have to enter the IP address of the other end, the router at the other end of the virtual circuit. Router B is using 172.16.5.2, and then we have to enter the DELSI number that router B is using. That would be 59. Now we could enter this command and we would have manually set up the mapping between router B's IP address and the DELSI number we need to use in order to get there. Well, there's one more thing I want to point out. If you're going to use routing protocols over frame relay, then you need to include the broadcast parameter at the end of this command. Why is that? Well, quite simply, if you remember, Frame Relay does not support broadcast and multicast um, automatically. So we have to tell the router to do this. And the broadcast parameter does just that. It enables the router to send broadcast or multicast packets over the Frame Relay virtual circuit. So if you're using a routing protocol, RIP or OSPF, and you do not have this parameter, then the routing protocol is not going to be able to speak between the two routers. So keep this in mind if you're troubleshooting a scenario where two routers can't talk to each other because uh, and, and they're, they're running frame relay between them, take a look at the configurations and make sure if there's a mapping that, that, that you have to have the broadcast parameter on there. Okay, now for this example, I'm going to let the router do the work for us and we'll use inverse ARP in order to figure out the IP to DELSI mappings. However, if you wanted to disable inverse ARP for any reason, the command is no frame relay inverse ARP, and that would turn off inverse ARP. Okay, so that completes our configurations. Now we just have to go ahead and verify what we've done, see if this is now working. So let's start off by just taking a look at our interface. And I'm only really doing this just to show you that the encapsulation frame relay has been set up. So you can see that here. Also, we can get some information on the LMI status, how many we've sent, how many we've received, and also what type of LMI we're currently using. Okay, so that's the router interface. The second command is the show frame relay PVC. Now this gives us specific information on the performance of the virtual circuit. And here's the most important part I want to point out to you, the PVC status. Here, ours is active, and that's what we want to see. If this says inactive, then the PVC is not working between the two routers, and the two routers cannot communicate over the frame relay network. Okay, so if you see active, then we're up and we're running. If you see inactive, then we have problems. It also tells you the DELSI number that's associated with this PVC, as well as the interface that this has been configured on. Now below this we get a lot of performance statistics about this interface and this PVC. Okay, so it's a very helpful command. Now let's take a look at our IP to DELSI mappings. The command we want to use there is again show frame relay, but this time the map parameter is put on. And here we just have one, serial 000. You can see after that the IP address of router B, 172.16.5.2, and the DELSI we would use in order to get there, DELSI 29. Okay, after that, you can see this has been learned dynamically. So this is telling us that we, we made this association by using inverse ARP. Okay, so if you ever, ever have any questions about the mappings, this is the command you want to use, show frame relay map. Okay, and finally, I'd just like to show one command, show frame relay LMI. Now earlier we saw some information on LMI at the interface level. Here we're getting a bit more information on how it's performing. So it'll tell you per interface what type you're using as well as a lot of information on the LMI messages themselves. So this could be useful if you're in a troubleshooting scenario and you need to figure out if your router is talking to the frame relay switch. Okay. 
Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. We introduced three new commands in order to get Frame Relay up and running. The first one is to define the encapsulation. And remember, this has to be the same on both routers. After that, we can go ahead and configure LMI if we want to, or we can let the router auto-sense what type is being used by the Frame Relay switch. And then finally, we had to go ahead and set up some mappings between the IP addresses and the DELCs used on the network. Now again, we got a break here because we can let Inverse ARP do the work for us, or we can go ahead and manually configure the mappings. After that, we used a, f a few uh, show commands in order to verify our work. The show frame relay PVC command will give you the status on whether or not your virtual circuit is up and running. Then we can go ahead and take a look at the mappings between the IPs and the DELCs with the show frame relay map command. And then finally, for some troubleshooting purposes, if you needed to look uh, more closely at LMI performance, you can use the show frame relay LMI command. Okay, so here we go. We went ahead and we configured uh, Frame Relay on a full mesh topology. In the next tutorial, you'll see it gets a bit more complicated when we introduce sub interfaces for a partially mesh topology. All right, so that's it. That is Frame Relay configuration and verification part one. Thanks for watching.